Hey guys, it's Christine. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where I talk about budgeting in my bullet journal. So on this channel, I talk about budgeting as a single mom of two adult kids. I have a son who lives at home with me and a daughter who is currently away at college. Um, my short term goal is to manage a smaller paycheck while watching all of my daughter's games this year. It is her senior year and um, I am determined to be there for all of her games, even if it means more expenses and getting less pay. Overall, my goals are to get my spending under control, save up for retirement, build an emergency fund, and try to stay out of debt all while still trying to live my life. It is a bit of a balancing act. If you would like to join me in this journey, please consider subscribing hit that like button and comment down below if you want to see more content like this. It would help my channel very much. So in today's video, I am finally gonna get to go over August paycheck number one. Today is payday. It is August 10th. <laughs> you guys, I've been waiting. This is probably one of my favorite videos to film, not gonna lie. So anyway, let's just get to it. So as usual, I have stuff penciled in here already. I know, spoiler, spoiler alert, right? Um, there are gonna be a few changes and to be honest, I had to do this because I was totally stressed out and I had to fill them all in. So as you can see here, this column is still in pencil. Usually I've penned this in by now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do that with you. Um, a lot of things were still kind of tentative. I had some transactions that had not cleared yet. So I wanted to make sure that they were, that my numbers are good. So I did get paid a different amount that I'm used to. It's because I missed a day and a half of work. If you have been watching my videos, I took a day off on Friday, what day was that? Friday the, the 5th? <laughs> I don't have my cal- I do have a calendar. What am I talking about? I don't have my calendar with me. It's right here, Christine. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I did move um, my daughter back to her dorm not only back to her dorm, but from her summer dorm to her fall dorm, all while bringing stuff from home down to LA. So anyway, long story short, I took a day off. And I also took a day off in the week, or half a day off in the week um, to go to a Giants game in San Francisco to watch the Dodgers kick butt. Um, it was actually an exciting game. It was really close um, at some point, and it was very worrisome that the Giants might win because Dodgers um, are my son's favorite team, and it was his birthday, and that would have been terrible if they had lost on his birthday. But anyway, so all that to say, my paycheck is less because I no longer, like, I've used up all my paid time off. Um and where I work, we don't accrue any more time off, or I think we might accrue it, but like we have a cap on how much time off we can use. I've reached that cap. Not that it was that big um, to start with, but I'm there, so I get no more paid time off. And that's why starting this month, I am going to be expecting less pay. Okay, so my pay was $1,993.77. Now, if you've seen my August budget with me video, um, you'll know that I did budget with $2,200 $21.97, which is my usual, like, that would be my full paycheck. Um, and I was expecting if I missed two days that I would get like 1800 something. But 
I also happened to have gotten a raise. So I got a modest raise, um, not even close to the rate of inflation, but whatever, a raise is a raise. I am totally okay with that. I was not expecting it. So that was a nice surprise. So my G1 checking account is an actual checking account with which I pay my bills. So a lot of these are um, auto-drafted from either from my credit card or from this account. And whether it's drafted from this account or a credit card, the money will come out of here. So it was sitting very perilously low at $5.75. That is because I overspent. Um, I overspent my last budget, so I had to pay a lot of that back. Um, yeah. And so my rent, etc. account has $31.09 left. Actually, let me come back up here. Okay, I always get ahead of myself. So, okay. So this is my August budget. So I had not, I had totally made a mistake down here where the VSP Vision, I thought it was going to be $49.99, but it's actually $36.59 and then $13.40 because my son aged out of that. So it's going to be two separate things, but it still adds up to $49.99. So I adjusted this right here. So instead of $369, it's going to get $376. And again, sorry for jumping around. Um, for my bills down here, yes. Um, my dental insurance is $32. VSP Vision, I am just putting $37 right now um, because I am not sure how they're doing it. Um, $52 for car insurance and $16 for Netflix. So this is what I'm working with. And I'm not going to fill these out until they actually come out. Um, on the ones that are penciled in. 37, 52, 16. So that's $137. But up here, I will have 575 plus 376. So I'm going to have $381 and 75 cents in there anyway. So even if this VSP vision insurance turns out to be $49.99 this time, I will have enough money to cover that. So I feel okay with that. All right, so now for G1 rent, etc. I budgeted $489 in there. Um, I got that by taking my monthly bills and dividing them by two. Um, so $489. Now, all that's coming out of this check, yeah, all that's coming out of this budget is this $50 right here. So I feel good about that. It's actually $51.39. We went a little bit over what I thought we would um, be billed. Um, but that's okay because I have it up here. So right now in my G1 rent, etc. account, I have $31.09. I'm adding $489 to it. So I'm going to have $520.09, which is going to be more than enough to cover this bill. And then whatever's left over in there will roll over into the next budget, and that will help pay my rent and my PG&E, so basically the gas and electric. So I have a new category here. Um, if you could tell, I added my daughter. So I emptied out one of my accounts and renamed it for my daughter. I am gonna budget $70 for her. And what that is coming from is like the food, etc right here so the starting amount is zero 
and I'm giving her $50 for food and $20 for laundry. And so that's how I got 70. I felt like I needed to, to keep a budget for her because I chronically overspend. I probably still will overspend, but at least this gives me a baseline of where I should be. So now we're gonna go to my T-Mobile variable account. Now this is an actual checking account with T-Mobile money. Um, in that account, I currently have $277.21. And if you saw my last video where I did my closeout, I had to zero out my categories so that I would come up with the amount or with the total that I was actually at in my bank account because it wasn't reconciling, so I had to make changes. Plus, I had a bunch of negatives and that just needed to be filled in or zeroed out. So the money had to come from somewhere. Um, anyhow, so gas and car, I had to zero that out. It's starting at zero. I am adding 70. For groceries, I am starting that out at zero because I have to zero it out. And I am adding 100. For household, that would have been 9103 but again I had to take money from there to help pay some of the categories I was negative in yeah um, but I am adding $30 to that so for eating out one of the biggest negatives in my last budget was $102.37 in the negative with in the eating out category but I am giving myself $50 for that for copays and meds, or sorry, for copays, I kept it at $65. Um, I am expecting to be getting my medication that is a little more expensive than my usual meds. Um, and I'm also adding $15 to that. So for, okay, here's where the confusion is, guys. I used to have copays and meds together. So Copays is for copays. 65, 15. So the thing I said about meds actually applies down here. $42.39. And I'm actually hoping this is going to be enough. This is going to take me to like 66, $56. That is right on the edge there. So I'm probably, if I am over in the meds category, I will probably borrow from copays. Uh, for allowance, I kept it at twenty two oh eight. This is another one of those categories that I'm not giving myself much money in. Instead of taking my allowance left over and buying stock slices with it, I am just keeping it. I'm keeping it. Bottom line. For fun money, again, this was $100. And I didn't touch it at all last budget. So I didn't want to punish myself. <laughs> Because I knew I wasn't putting any more money in that in this budget. So that's getting zero. But it retains the hundred. So that works out. Uncategorized is zero. I actually didn't spend anything in uncategorized. I had a positive $29.60 in there. But again, to help me pay off the little negative bits that I had, I had to zero that out. And I'm adding a hundred. So if I did my math right, this should be 277.21 here. And this is 302. So up here, I have the $302 and I'm adding that to the existing 277.21. And so I should have $579.21 left. We're gonna skip this part for now. So for T-Mobile money, I also have a savings account that I keep my sinking funds in. Now, similar to the, the variable expenses, I did have one category that had a negative and that was the clothing. But beauty and hair was zero. 
sorry, beauty and hair was $250 and I'm adding zero. Um, beauty for brows is $158.25. I'm adding zero to that. Car maintenance is $200.15 and that is the only category in this account that's getting anything. So that's getting $50. I do drive an older car, so it's really important to me to have some money set aside. So for gifts and giving, I have $48.39. I'm not adding anything to that. There's not really anybody. Yes, there is. I said this last time too. Okay, I have two nieces that are com that are having birthdays coming up, but I, if I don't use this money for that, I might just give them um, gift cards that I already so have. So for clothing I did go negative I was negative 51 42 again I took these numbers right here added them up and adjusted my account to reflect that difference um oh clothing's oh is that right that's a recipe for disaster <laughs> So clothing is getting zero. We're going to see if that's actually going to work out. I mean, that's what whiteout is for. So if I did my math right, this is $761.79. And I am only adding 50. So that is $761 up here. $0.79. Cents. Adding 50, 761, 79, plus 50, 811, 79. Okay, so we're at, so 376 plus 489 plus 70 plus 302 plus 50 is 12.87. So we're going to subtract that from 1993.77. So we have $706.77 left. Um, so that's actually good. Oh my goodness. Okay. So let's, let's continue to this. So as part of my August budget, I am lowering the money I'm contributing to my um, Roth IRA. I was putting away $250 each paycheck, but it is going to go down to $200. Um, I was kind of hoping to put a little extra towards this, this paycheck, but it didn't work out that way since I did take a considerable amount of time off during a period in which I thought I was going to get a full paycheck. So that didn't work out. <laughs> didn't work out like I thought it would. So $2,950. And this is the amount contributed, not the amount it is worth. Although right now, the last time I checked that um, the values did increase so that is looking good. Um, okay, so for my emergency fund, if you're wondering where this $3,000 came from, let me show you. So previously I had this T Mo Other with 1604 in it, and then I had my emergency fund with 1415 in it. So I decided to take my emergency fund and send it to my T-Mobile money account, which earns me 4%. So it's not your regular checking account. To earn the 4%, I actually have to make 10 purchases within the specified time frame for that 4% to kick in. Even if I didn't make 10 purchases out of that checking account, the percentage would still be like... um. 1.5%. So basically where it was sitting, it this $1,400 earned me like six cents 
Whereas this right here earned me, I believe, $10 in a month. So I took this money and I put it into my other account. So that's where it's sitting now. And this is the account I renamed for my daughter. I made that actual account my daughter's account um, where I'm going to use it like a sinking fund to keep the money separate from my other money. And then the emergency fund is now sitting in T-Mobile. And as you could tell, I did take that $15 out and the $4 out and I put that towards my negative categories, if that makes sense. So I'm not adding anything to my emergency fund. It's just gonna sit pretty right there. And Santa Saver is steady at $500.10. I didn't used to have um, a goal for this account, but because we will be spending a lot of money traveling and stuff, we are gonna go ahead and um, stop contributing to this. So I didn't do the math for this, but let's just do it really quick. So six, two, yeah, it should be right. That should be right, right? Hopefully. So that looks right. I'm going to subtract another 200 and I have $506.77. Now let's get over to this part of the budget. I have um, a negative amount in these two categories. So for gas and car for travel, I have negative $44.10. And the reason why I didn't zero this out is because I still owe it on my Chase card. Same thing with the hotel. I still owe $132.35. So I didn't want to zero that out. So those are going to stay like that until I pay them off, obviously. Um, Could I have taken it from up here? Yes, I could have, but I decided not to. I also added an extra category here. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, I have this highlighter yellow for tickets. So when I first did my budget for the traveling to my daughter's games, I you know, thought about gas and car, I thought about hotel, and I thought about venue parking. What I didn't think about were the tickets. So I did some math and hopefully the ticket costs are about the same as what is posted online. It's gonna cost me about $200 in tickets, not this month, but like just overall. So I kind of wanted to just sink that in there if I could, but I don't know if that's gonna be possible because we have $506.77. So we're gonna do 45 here, and then one, let's do 132 over here. Should I have made that 133? Maybe. So minus 45, minus 132. And that leaves me with three twenty nine seventy seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and fund the tickets, and then I still have one hundred twenty nine dollars left. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one twenty nine here. Yes. This is going to mess my numbers up. Oh my goodness. Okay. So 45 plus 132 plus 129 plus 200. It's 506. Okay. So I don't have a line for this, which I probably should have thought about beforehand. So let me just put, I'm gonna put an asterisk here, 
just to remind myself that it is not part of this. So we're just gonna make sure we have $1,993.77. So we have the 376, the 489, the 70, the 302, and the 50, the 200, and the 506. And I have 77 cents left. And I'm just gonna leave it there. Yeah, so not quite a zero based budget, but pretty darn close. And I feel I feel a little better already. Um, yeah, I was worried I was not going to have enough money for the tickets. Um, parking, I don't have quite enough. This should have been more. But that's okay. We can take that money in the next budget. So anyway, um, if you got this far, thanks so much um, for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.